Yoga Club. Hello, so it is Mental Health Awareness Month. That's why this week's Yoga Club is all about you looking after your wonderful mind and your feelings. It's been a challenging year, so it's more important than ever to take care of yourself. In fact, all Cosmic Kids videos are there to help you do just that. And it's why so many of you tell me it helps you calm your body and your mind. And it feels good. It does, doesn't it? I love yoga for just the same reasons you do. So before we begin, let's take a moment to share some of your marvellous messages. Hello to Boston, who is 10 from West Virginia, and to your siblings, Eleanor, George and Harriet too. Glad to hear you are joining in and you're doing yoga club every week. And thank you for the idea of My Hero Academia. That looks like an awesome comic. And I love that Izuku, the main character, is so determined to develop his superpowers, even though he wasn't born with any. Just like Batman, in a way. Thank you, Boston, for telling me all about it. Ione Miller is four and a half and does Cosmic Kids every Saturday with her mum. Now, she says it helps her feel happy and peaceful, which is so wonderful to hear. That's looking after your mental and physical health right there. Now, Ione will be moving from Los Angeles to New York after her birthday. That's a big move. And I absolutely love Ione's idea. Yes, I adore the Great British Bake Off and I would, I love Noel. I would so love to do a Great British Bake Off yoga adventure with Noel. And I kind of think he'd be up for it. He's just that sort of guy. I don't know him personally, but if I ever do get to meet him, I will ask him and I will tell him about your idea, Ione. I love it. I'm so in with that. Imagine the poses for the signature, the technical and the showstopper challenge, the tent, the gingham, the mixers, the ovens. Oh, thank you so much for making that an idea I can think about. Big shout out to Brandy Christoph's second graders at Live Oak Elementary in Austin, Texas. Great ideas in the form of Prodigy, a math game, Golden Retrievers, a gorilla and Captain America. Hmm. Now we already have Alice in Wonderland ready for you to try on both YouTube and the app. And we have a dinosaur yoga called Tiny the T-Rex. So do go and check them out. Hello to Celeste, who is six and in the Seychelles. Oh, how lovely. Celeste uses the Cosmic Kids app, which is great. Loads of videos on there that aren't on YouTube. Celeste has been enjoying all the dance, the super yogas, the zen dens, and has suggested a mini-themed yoga adventure. That's a great idea, Celeste. Minnie is on my list and you are very special too. I thank you. I thank you so much for your lovely words. Hello to Morley, who is four and wrote a super message telling me he enjoys the space themed yoga adventures. Well, soon on the Cosmic Kids app, Morley, space super yoga will be out and I am sure you'll love that. Thanks to Ethan for the idea to do a new Spider-Man adventure. I'm thinking I'll add Spider-Man to the next series of Superhero Kids Yoga in Space. And a big shout out to Zane and Skylar who are watching on the app as well. Great choices, you two. Magic Carpet Ride and Focus Potion Brain Breaks and Hulk and Wonder Woman superhero yoga adventures. That's very cool. You guys rock. Thanks to Crystal for writing in on their behalf. A big happy birthday shout out to Jacob, who turned five on the 3rd of April. I hope you had a fantastic birthday, Jacob, and I'm so glad you love your cosmic kids. Hello to Mama, Papa and Antarctica, who is two there in Tigra, Argentina. I'm so glad to hear you're enjoying the super yogas and thanks for the idea, Antarctica, to do a puppy themed story. Hello and thank you to Claire, who is five, and little sister Caitlin, who is two. They love Mimi the Mermaid's yoga adventure and would like to see A Bug's Life as a yoga story. Good one. A huge thanks to Emmy and her brother Thomas for their fabulous video where they did the little green frog song. Super work, guys, and thank you so much for sending it. So don't forget, Yoga Quest is there for you if you haven't tried it.
go to cosmickids.com forward slash yoga quest and get your map pack and do keep your messages coming to me at yoga club at cosmickids.com i love reading them and watching when your videos come in and your pictures come in so just send them along too it's just wonderful now it's time to dive into some fabulous yoga and mindfulness that will truly help you look after your amazing minds and your bodies i hope you enjoy this one Hello everyone, welcome to Cosmic Kids. I'm Jamie and this is your place for yoga, stories and fun. It's easy, just copy the moves I do and enjoy the adventure. Now, we always start in the same way and that's by sitting on our bottoms and crossing our legs and bringing our hands together at our hearts to say our secret yoga code word, which is Namaste. Ready? After three, one, Two, three, namaste. There, now we're ready to begin. Shall we find out who our story is about today? Yes, let's look through the cosminoculars. Bringing your thumbs and fingers together, have a look through. Wow, it's beautiful. What amazing colors. Can you see the picture? What is it? It's a baby lioness. It's Lulu, the baby lioness cub. Yay! What's Lulu doing? Oh, she's doing yoga. She's doing flamingo pose. This is so exciting. It means we're off to Tanzania in Africa. Let's get ourselves ready for our long aeroplane journey. First, our necks. We look over one side and then the other. Over one side and then the other. We nod all the way forwards and all the way up. All the way forwards and all the way up. We tick our head one side and tock it to the other. Tick it and tock it and tick it and tuck it and go all the way around like the hands of a clock and the other way too. Oh, that feels lovely in our necks. Now it's time for our shoulders. We roll our shoulders round and round. We lift them up and put them down. We lift up one, we lift up two, we put down one, we put down two, going up, up, and down, and down, up, up, a down, a down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Yay, there we go, everyone. Now, I think we need to pack a backpack. So we put our legs out long and we take our fingers to our toes, bending our knees a little bit to open it up. We take our arms out wide. We twist one way to get our tent because we're going to be camping. Mm. Here it goes. Perlonk. Lovely. We take our arms out wide again and we twist the other way and we get our sun cream because it's really, really hot there. We take it and we check the lids on. Lovely. Put it in. Ooh. Lift your arms up high and close your backpack. Ooh. Now we give everyone at home a great big hug goodbye. Coming up onto our knees, we stretch out wide and we give them all a cuddle. Bye everybody! Time to catch a plane. We take our arms wide again and drop down onto one hand and wave at the sky. We bring one foot in front of our knee and stretch our back leg out behind us, going meow. And the other side too, coming back to the middle with your knees and your arms all stretched out. We come down onto the other side, wave at the sky and bring our other foot in front of our knee and stretch our back leg out behind us. Ready? And we've arrived in Tanzania. Wow, it is hot here. So we put on our sun cream. Reach into your backpack. Ooh, 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 got it. And stand up. Here we go. Blob, 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 blob. Rub it on your legs. All the way down on our legs. 
And now, more. Blub, 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 blub. Rub it on your arms. Oh, yes, that's it. All over our arms. And our bodies ready. Blub, 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 blub. Ooh, all over our bodies, yes. And our faces ready. Blub, 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 blub. All over our faces. That's it. Now we've got all our sun cream on. We are ready. But there's a clever thing we can do to cool ourselves down. Can you make your tongue into a straw by curling up the sides like this? Now suck in. And it makes our mouth feel all cold. If we can't do that curly thing with our tongue, we can do a big smile like this. And we can suck in the air through our teeth. Ready? Ah, that's better. That helps us feel all lovely and cool. We get into our Jeep. Sitting down, take your legs out long and pop your seatbelt on. Start the engine. We're going over to one side. We're going over to the other side. We're going down a hill. We're going up a hill. We've arrived at our campsite. Yay! Let's put up our tent. We stand up. And we put up one pole, boop, two poles, boop, three poles, boop, four poles. Yay! Now we check the zip works all the way down the front. Ready? Zzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz
Hmm. Down at the bottom, Lulu gives her roar a try. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, dear. Poor Lulu. Back up the tree, everyone. Try with the other foot now on top, your hands together, growing up tall. We listen carefully, but it's no good. We can't hear her roar. We jump down from the tree. One, two, three. Doing. Lulu's getting really angry. I'm never going to be able to roar. I'm so, so bad at roaring. It's horrible. But, Lulu, getting angry at yourself won't help. Let's take some deep breaths to feel better and calmer. That's better. Now you can think clearly again. Let's go see Ernie, the baby elephant at the watering hole. He can really make a big trumpet sound out of his trunk. Maybe he'll help. We stand up and we take our trumpety trunk out and, like Ernie, we do a big trumpety trump. Ready? <laughs> Lulu would love to be able to make a sound as big as Ernie's, so she tries. Coming down to your knees again, ready? One, two, three. <sighs> but it's no good. Lulu gets so angry that Ernie can make a bigger sound than her that she ties his trunk in a knot. Arms out wide, crisscross one under the other and wave with your underneath arm. Then swizzle your arms round. Ernie's trunk is in a knot. What did you do that for? Poor Ernie. Lulu, you can't do that to Ernie. You need to count to ten and calm down, taking a deep breath. Lulu tries. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <sighs> she unties Ernie's trunk. Standing up, take your arms back into that swizzly position and untie them. Yes. Oh, thanks for untying my trunk, Lulu. Lulu says sorry for being so mean and taking her anger out on poor Ernie. From the trees jumps little Mindy, the baby chimp. <gasps> oh, <laughs> I couldn't help overhearing that you're having a problem with your roar. Well, what I do is I do big monkey jumps and I do a big monkey call at the top. I'll show you three times. Ready? <gasps> we love monkey jumps, so we join in with Mindy. Up on your toes, ready to jump and call like a monkey. One, two, three. Ooh, ah, ah, ah. And again. One, two, three. Ooh, ah, ah, ah. Last time. One, two, three. It's Lulu's turn. She's ready to go. One, two, three. One, two, three. And again. One, two, three. She's still a little bit grumpy, but at least she had fun doing the monkey jumps. All of a sudden, around the corner comes George. The baby giraffe. Standing up, put one foot forward, one foot back, and lift your arms up tall like a giraffe's neck. Now, giraffes don't make any sound, nothing at all. And little George has something he needs to tell Lulu. Lulu, you need to warn everyone. The volcano's about to erupt. Oh, no. This is Lulu's moment. She now needs to learn how to roar. <gasps> she takes big giant lion steps up the hill. Standing tall, step forward. Big step. And again, big step. Lulu gets herself ready. Coming down to your knees, everyone. After three, she takes a big deep breath. and prepares for the roar of her life. One, two, three. The 
ground begins to rumble and shake. Lulu has done it. She managed to roar right when it counted. All of the animals hear her for miles around. The flamingos hear her, standing up, reaching tall, seeing if you can hold on to one foot and maybe hopping a bit. Was that a baby lioness? Yes, I think she was roaring about the volcano. Right, come on, off we go. Hoppity, hoppity, hop. <laughs> the other animals that hear her, the snakes slithering around, coming onto our tummies, everyone. Sounds like a baby lioness. She was roaring about a volcano erupting. Come on, snakes, let's slither away. The crocodiles hear her, stretching out long, opening their jaws. Did you hear that? Yeah, I heard that. That was, uh, that was Baby Lioness, right? Yeah, yeah. She was roaring about some, uh, some volcano. Volcanoes were up. Right, come on, better get moving. Come on, off, go, go, go. And the camels heard her. Coming back up to two knees, everyone. Put your hands behind your back and press your bottom forward, looking up to the sky, and do a big raspberry to the ceiling. <laughs> well, that's charming of the camels. All of the animals heard little Lulu, including her mummy, her daddy, her brothers and her sisters, who were so proud of their little baby lioness cub. She had done it. She had learnt how to roar. And along the way, she learnt how to cope with getting frustrated and angry, which was really good. But we'd better get out of here. <gasps> Floating down towards us is a hot air balloon. That's how we're going to get home. Yay! We cross our legs and we need to blow it up again so it's nice and full. We bring our hands around our mouth and we blow. <gasps> <laughs> we start to float, saying our special little floaty rhyme. Tick, tock, like a clock, until I find my centre. <gasps> wow, we've done it. We're floating away. We wave down to Lulu and all of the other animals as they hide and prepare themselves for the volcano. We lie back in our hot air balloon, feeling pleased at how we have helped Lulu today find her roar. But what's more important is we've helped Lulu learn how to deal with it when she gets all frustrated and angry. Being unkind towards herself isn't going to help her. But if she can, in that moment when she's angry, breathe. Breathe slowly and deeply. Count to ten. Maybe take a little walk if she needs to for some fresh air. She will clear her head. Well done, Lulu. Well done for finding your voice. We've all got a voice. And we all need to let it out sometimes. We relax here in our hot air balloon. But then it's time for us to wake up again. So we wiggle our fingers and our toes. We hug our knees into our chest. And roll over onto our sides. To come up to sitting again with our legs crossed and our hands together at our heart just like we started and we finish with our secret yoga code word which is namaste ready one two three namaste well done everyone thanks for coming on the adventure and for helping Lulu with her anger. You did so well. Come back soon for another Cosmic Kids adventure. Bye-bye. <laughs>
Welcome to the Cosmic Kids Zen Den. Your place to help you learn how your mind works and what you can do to keep yourself feeling happy and healthy. This is Jack. Jack is going to help us today by doing the Zen Den with us. First, let's get comfy. Sitting here, cross-legged on the floor, long, tall backs and shoulders relaxed. Or, if you prefer, sit on a chair. If you are sitting on a chair, sit tall, both feet on the floor, back nice and long, and shoulders relaxed. Get your position sorted. And when you're ready, take some nice deep breaths. In through your nose, and out through your mouth. In through your nose, and out through your mouth. Good. After a few breaths, you should start to feel nice and calm and relaxed. Now, I'd like you to imagine that you and your mind is a big, lovely pond. In that pond are lots of different kinds of fish. These are your feelings all swimming around together. There's a happy fish, a sad fish, a sleepy fish, an excited fish, an angry fish, a worried fish, a playful fish, a calm fish a kind fish, a selfish fish. So many fish, so many feelings, all swimming around the pond. Your job here is just to be the pond. Be the pond. It's wonderful being the pond because you can just watch all your different feelings just swimming by. All of them are okay. Every feeling is welcome. You be the pond and let the fish be the fish. No need to do anything with those feelings except watch them swimming around. See if you can be the pond now and just watch seeing what kind of feelings you're feeling. They just swim past and you can just watch them. Remember, be the pond. Just be the pond. And if we follow this special Zen Den exercise, we are usually okay. Just watching all the fish swim around. Except sometimes we might feel like it's hard to let them just swim by. We might stop being the pond and find we've become one of the fish, like the angry fish. And when that happens, we might find ourselves saying or doing something that hurts other people. But we're not the angry fish. We're the pond. Be the pond. Slowly we start to come back to the here and now. Isn't it interesting how many different kinds of fish we all have swimming around in our pond? So we practice just being the pond. And when you feel like one of your fish has taken over, just say to yourself, be the pond. This will help you come back to having all your feelings just swimming around happily together. Thanks, Jack, for your help today. And thank you for doing this Zen Den. You really are becoming a true Zen Den master each time you practice. 
I'll see you again soon for more Cosmic Kids Yoga and Mindfulness. Bye-bye. Welcome to the Cosmic Kids Zen Den. This is where we spend a little time looking at our minds so we can be healthy and happy in our lives. First, let's get comfy. Sitting on our bottoms with our legs crossed, bring your hands to your knees and take a big deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. <sighs> Lovely. Now, let's get the Zen Den ready so we can really enjoy it. Let's get some sounds going. Ooh, yes. Look at all these lovely sounds. Lots of brilliant ones to choose from. Let's pick a couple that help us feel all lovely and relaxed. Look, a piano tune. Let's have that. Oh, and a soft singing bowl. That's a lovely mix. Now for a smell. Oh, wow. Look at these. What a fun set of things. Coffee smell. Ooh, wow. French fries. Mmm, that'll make us hungry. Ah, yes. Let's go for the lemon. That gives us a boost of energy and really wakes us up. Today, we're going to talk about the owl and the guard dog. A really interesting way of understanding our brains. But first, I'm going to share a story about something that happened to me when I was 11 years old. At school, I was put into the top set for maths. I was very excited because it meant I would be with my friends. I also felt a bit proud that my teachers thought I was clever enough to be in set one. The hardest thing for me in those maths classes was when Mrs Barfield, my teacher, used to write a problem or an equation up on the board. She would just put it up there and then give us a few minutes to work on it. No explanation or anything. For some reason, whenever she did this, my brain would freeze. I would get into a panic and huff and puff at being made to do it. And I'd even blame Mrs Barfield for being a bad teacher because I found it so difficult. I once even asked to go to the bathroom just so I could get out of there. I got so uptight that I certainly wasn't able to work out the maths problem. Have you ever had this? Where something happens that makes you sort of freeze, so you can't even think straight? Well, don't worry. It's quite normal. And it's because of how your brain works. You see, our brain is really clever. But above all, it's trying to protect us. It's always on guard in case anything happens that might be dangerous so that it can help us stay safe. There's a special part of the brain which sniffs everything out that we're sensing to decide whether it's okay or if it's a serious threat. It's called the amygdala, or as I like to call it in your brain, your guard dog. If your guard dog notices something and thinks, hold on a minute, this is scary and dangerous and I don't like it, it'll get your body ready so that you can protect yourself. It gets you ready to fight or it tells you to run away or it makes you freeze. Now, our guard dog doesn't always get it right it can get carried away, which is what happened in my maths class. The problem Mrs Barfield wrote on the board wasn't really life-threatening, but my guard dog decided it was, so I froze. I wanted to fight. I even wanted to leave. I felt stupid and embarrassed that I was in a class where I couldn't understand. So the guard dog in my brain started barking loudly and running around protecting me. This makes it impossible for the part of my brain which can solve maths problems to get involved. This part is called the prefrontal cortex, right up here at the front. Or as I like to call it, your owl. Owls are wise, you see. They're thoughtful 
and good at thinking about things. Had I been able to calm my guard dog down, my owl might have had a chance at solving that maths problem. Or if it couldn't solve it, it would have shown me how to ask Mrs Barfield for some help. Instead, my guard dog had taken over and was making me panic, so my poor owl didn't get a look in. Maybe you can think of a time when your guard dog caused you to react in a way that didn't really help you. A time when your clever, wise owl didn't get the chance to help you out. Your guard dog was too busy trying to protect you, even though you didn't really need it to. So you were fighting or freezing or running away. So, what can you do about that jumpy guard dog? What would a Zen Den master do to get it all under control? Well, here's something you can try the next time you feel your guard dog taking over. First, see if you can just notice him starting to get upset. Do you feel yourself want to run away? Do you feel the urge to start arguing or fighting? Or do you feel like you're frozen to the spot and you don't know what to do? These are the warning signs of it taking over. It happens to all of us. Actually, it's trying to keep us safe. The key is what do you do now? The best tool I know is called the Magic 10. With the Magic 10, you count from 10 down to 1, giving your brain some magic time to be calm and process what's going on before you say or do anything. Even if you've started to fight already, rather than carrying on, step back and take a magic 10. Let's see what this does to our guard dog. Count with me now from 10. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. There. Can you see how he's less worried now? He's happier. And so our lovely owl can get a chance to help us work out what to do. Of course, your guard dog is very important. He is there to save your life. If there is a real threat, like a fire, or you get lost, or you need to rescue someone, your guard dog will make sure that you make things happen until you're safe again. But sometimes he can just cause a great big fuss over nothing that isn't helpful. It's good to know, isn't it? I wish I had known about my guard dog when I was 11 in my maths class. I might have been able to get some help. And maths would have been much more fun for me. And Mrs Barfield. Hopefully understanding your brain in this way will help you know why you react in certain ways. And with the magic 10, you now have a good way of calming your guard dog and making some space for your wise owl to help you think clearly. Well done for listening and learning about your brain here in the Zen Den. You're on your way to becoming a true Cosmic Kids Zen Den master. Bye-bye! Peace out. Time out. Hello, Jamie here. Welcome to Peace Out. This is a quick practice you can do anytime to help yourself feel really good. Firstly, wherever you are, whether sitting or lying down, get comfortable. If you are sitting, make your back nice and long. If you are lying down, get settled so you are happy to be still. Now you're in position. Gently close your eyes. Well done. 
to start, let's look at what's happening right now in your mind. I'll ask you some questions. All you have to do is think your answers. What thoughts can you see in your mind right now? What are you thinking? Remember, thoughts are like bubbles. They pop up and then float away or burst. Look at them, just noticing them. Ah, there's a thought. And another. Next question. What feelings are here for you now? Have a good look at them. Even if they are hard feelings that don't feel very nice. Just look at them. Not changing them. They are all allowed. Now see if you can notice your body. Imagine you are shining a torch all over the different areas. Having a good look. Is there anywhere in particular that you can spot? Can you notice any tightness or holding? No need to change it. Just look at it. Now you are going to be a Zen ninja and use laser sharp focus. First, feel your breathing. Your tummy lifting and lowering with each breath. Keep your ninja laser on your breathing. Feel it coming in and going out. Each and every breath. See it. Watch it. Follow it. If your brain decides to wander back to those thoughts, spot it, like all Zen ninja warriors do, and come back to your focus, your breathing, in and out, in and out. Well done. You're doing a great job. See if you can imagine that your breath has made a big warm sunshine light up inside you, right in your middle. See if you can make the warmth spread through your whole body, like you are sending the sunshine down your arms to your fingertips, down your legs to your toes, up into your head and around your face, like you are filling yourself up with goodness. Now see if you can beam that warmth and sunshine further out. Filling the whole room you are in, the building, street, town and country you are in, the whole world and universe. Like you are making all this sunshine grow, sending so much light and warmth. By making all this goodness, and sharing it like this means everything will be fine. Slowly open your eyes and look around. Here you are, beautiful, brilliant you, ready for whatever's next with a clear mind and a strong heart. Well done for helping yourself come back to being the best you can be. This is Jamie saying peace out.